for tuning in to this edition of Positively Montana. I'm Hallie Schwinnard. Each week we travel the state looking for the positive. People helping others and doing good in our communities. In Plains, there's an unsung hero committed to his community for the past 40 years. This is a really beautiful part of Montana. It's a it's a hidden place, you know. Joel Bannum is passionate about people. The only show in town is is humanity, you know, is people. Everything else is just stuff. For over three decades, he's worked as a hospital chaplain in Plains. Been at a lot of bedsides. I think I've probably buried over a hundred people on the hill up there. You know, sat with a lot of those people on their deathbed and. Um, nobody's thinking about stuff. They're thinking about people. But his commitment to community doesn't stop with religion. We're quick to respond. Um, everybody does their job well, they're well trained. He's a great guy that, I mean, he cares a lot about people. He's helped many people in a lot of ways. Bannum has been fighting fires in Montana for over 10 years. Now he volunteers with Plains Rural Fire. I moved over to rural because I'm getting a little old to go into burning buildings and I didn't want to shave my beard for that. <laughs> but his service still doesn't stop there. Bannum also volunteers for the local emergency services. You know, because you, you really get to be with people in a bad day for them, you know. I mean, especially with like EMS. Somebody's having a, a really bad day and you get to be there and help them through that day. Lately, however, Plains residents know him for a different role. Every local government needs somebody like you. He is really that good of a person and, and that good of a mayor. Bannum stepped out of retirement, albeit reluctantly, to become the mayor of Plains. A role that brings him back to his passion, people. Well, that people aspect of it is the only reason I continue to do it. Plus, nobody else wants the job. <laughs> Those who know him know he couldn't be more deserving of the unsung hero title. The faithfulness of sticking it out has made him an unsung hero. And he has time for everybody. He's really a leader. In Plains, Claire Peterson, MTN News. Another crop of medical students at Toro College will soon be converging on the Electric City, and local businesses and civic leaders are once again preparing to roll out the red carpet in hopes of impressing these future medical professionals. Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine will soon be welcoming a new class of an estimated 135 students. These students will be joining the Great Falls community and the Great Falls Development Authority is outreaching to the community for help in welcoming these future medical professionals. Last year, over 40 businesses donated over $40,000 worth of items for the new students, including museum passes, concert tickets, and vouchers for local restaurants. Over the past year, businesses have been happy to report seeing the students out utilizing those tickets and witnessing them enjoying our community. The purpose behind that was not only just to make them feel like welcome and wanted and you know show them how excited we are that they're here, but we wanted them to get out in the community and you know go explore downtown, go explore the museums, go explore the ski hill. Um, we want them to fall in love with Great Falls. And so this year we're asking, you know, the same thing. I've even talked to a lot of the students and, you know, they love it here. The Development Authority is also looking for those interested in sponsoring a white coat for students that is given to them during Toro's white coat ceremony, as well as community members to take a small group of new students out to dinner. They took 105 students out to dinner uh, different restaurants and small groups and it was so much fun. I reached out to everybody that hosted just to kind of get a recap and you know a lot of them stay in touch with their students and that was just another way for us to help them feel part of the community. It's scary moving somewhere new and so if they feel like they know a couple people then it might make their transition a little bit easier. For information on how you can support the new class of Toro students, visit our website. I'm Anissa Coomer, MTN News. If you need specialty mental health care in Gallatin County, you have to travel at least 130 miles to get help. But that's about to change. Patients will soon be able to find the care they need at Bozeman Health. 
Medical professionals here at Bozeman Health say they recognize the increased need for emergency mental health services in Montana. Now construction has begun on a new unit in the hospital that will provide a safe, therapeutic environment for adults experiencing any type of mental health crisis. We are behind the eight ball and, and while there's progress being made, we've got a long way to go. Mental health therapist Rebecca Pearson is the founder of Yellowstone Wellness, a Bozeman-based practice she's owned since 2013. In that time, she's seen many positive changes when it comes to mental health services and crisis intervention, but... It's still not enough. One issue Pearson pointed out was the inconvenience folks experience who are in need of inpatient mental health specialty care in Gallatin County. Every year I have at least a handful of people that need to seek services outside of this general area for a higher level of care. Something we've not been able to provide here in Bozeman. Until the hospital program now. So by Bozeman Health fully committing and engaging in this process to develop our own unit, we're going to be able to take care of our friends and family right here in our community without having to send them 135 miles away. Nicole Madden is the system director for behavioral health at Bozeman Health Deaconess Regional Medical Center and she says the team is pleased to announce construction has kicked off on the new adult inpatient behavioral health unit. This customized care space will serve up to 14 adult patients. It can be very terrifying, it can be very isolating and so being able to offer that care here where they're close to home that changes the, the perspective and the experience that they have in getting that care. This 9,100 square foot unit has been carefully curated to create a calming therapeutic environment for patients. A large construction project, but well worth it, Madden says. The unit is slated to open in 2025. Pearson says she hopes the hospital's 14 bed program is a catalyst for new ideas and elevated care in Gallatin County for mental health that that inspires us to continue to talk about it, to continue to build more programs. In Bozeman, Jolie Salee, MTN News. From invasive species to trash, a group of divers gathered at Giant Spring State Park for a day of cleaning. Divers from Underwater Soldiers, a local nonprofit, gathered at Giant Springs to do a unique type of cleanup. So what we're doing is we're taking out the invasive species of weeds and stuff like that that's going to be clogging up the spring all summer. We scuba dove in Giant Springs uh, to remove the, the invasive plant species, some of the, the garbage that, that gets tossed in there from, from people, and, and just generally cleaned up the, the springs so that when people visit here, it, it looks good and people are able to enjoy it. The divers were able to experience a part of the springs that few ever get to see. So we, we saw two massive brown trout. I mean, those guys had to have been this big down there. Uh, we also got to see the, the source of the giant springs, which was really beautiful because you could see the, the, the fresh water pushing the sand up and, and displacing it. And in several places, it would actually force you up to the surface of the water. There, there was so much pressure coming out of the ground. The work done by underwater soldiers has a direct impact on the community. Giant Springs is a, is a state park and, and a lot of people, you know, everybody around us has come down here to, to enjoy this place, to spend time in the sun and, and spend time with their friends and their family. And, and we want to try to maintain the, uh, the integrity uh, of the water, uh, make sure that it's a good environment for the, the species that live here and, and make sure that, that it, it looks attractive and it's clean so that everybody can come and enjoy it. It's not just the park getting the benefit. The cleanup is part of a veteran therapy program. Underwater Soldiers is a nonprofit organization that aims to help military veterans deal with, with symptoms of PTSD and just that, that lack of camaraderie that, that some guys can feel when they're freshly separated from the military. So it, it, it's just a bunch of military veterans getting together um, scuba diving, obviously, but, but really just supporting each other and, and doing something that we all love. With the springs freshly cleaned, the public are encouraged to visit the park, as well as the many other natural wonders that our state has. Just encourage people to, to get out in the summer's upon us. There are mountains, there are rivers, there, there's lots to do here in Montana, and, it, and it's out there just to go get it. In Great Falls, I'm James Rowland, MTN News.
AmeriCorps needs your help in figuring out where its service members should be spending their time and effort in the state. Serve Montana is the governor's office of community service. It's looking for Montana's input through a community needs assessment. They're hoping to hear from 5,000 individuals. The responses will help create a three-year plan for the direction of AmeriCorps. Officials say responses help increase the effectiveness of the governor's office of community service. Still to come on this edition of Positively Montana, one senior working to get others active and involved while having a bit of fun. How he's doing it when we come back. Welcome back. It's an easy game to play and perfect for social situations. Just two of the reasons why cornhole continues to grow in popularity. It even has professional leagues these days. One Montana senior helped get a league underway at one of Billings senior living homes, and it's catching on fast with the residents there. It's a Monday evening at Affinity at Billings senior living. And it's game on. Every week, a growing number of residents gather for a fun yet competitive game of cornhole. But it's a phenomenon, really good. 94 year old Jim Southworth is the driving force behind this competition. He even built the boards himself. Yeah, I'm a carpenter by trade. I was. Manager asked me to build them. And then and they stored them away a while. Then I finally dug them out about two years ago. And I've been playing ever since. And everybody is pretty happy with it. And that is pretty evident from the cheering and laughter that can be heard. The Monday Night Cornhole League is something many of these residents look forward to every week. The fellowship, most, mostly. And then, of course, we like to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is great. Uh, we've got a lot of our ladies are hanging on to their walkers and they compete, and they're competitive, and they do a really good job. So this game is, is just super for us. There's a lot of camaraderie, a lot of competitiveness, and everybody's had a good time. And that is the reason that Jim decided to start this. A little fun, a little fellowship. I feel like how important it is to take part of the activities. Some could just sit there and do nothing, but... I think it's just good for everybody. In Billings, Russ Reese, MTN News. After years of work and contributions from many organizations, the skate park in Clinton finally held its grand opening ceremony. The skateboard community of Montana has just grown a little bit larger as Clinton just launched its grand opening of its new skate park. I say, if your kids eating concrete and skating, keep them on a board. After many years of hard work with the county and through generous contributions from organizations across the state, the skate park in Clinton is officially open. One of the contributors to the park was the nonprofit Montana Pool Service, which was founded by Montana's own Jeff Amit from Pearl Jam, who was in town for the launch. It's it's awesome just to be around all the young people that are, you know, you see you see the the wheels starting to turn, and I think it I think it's helpful. It's helpful in life. It, help, it helps uh, you navigate uh, failure because a lot of skateboarding is failure and getting back up and doing it until you, until you make the trick. So, Amit also believes spending time at a skate park opens up opportunities for people to explore life careers. Uh, it's a gateway to all the creative things. It's a gateway to photography and painting and other sports and sort of looking at the world in a in a different uh, way and it, and it connects sort of all these um, oddball creative types. One of the most important aspects of a skate park is community and people at this skate park are already encouraging others to get better. Isaiah Stevenson runs a skate shop in Helena and he says young people need a place to interact with each other. I think especially with COVID, it kept a lot of people inside for the three years. There wasn't much to do. Some people got active. Some people stayed at home, I feel like. There's no in between, I feel like. I think this was great, especially for the younger kids to be able to socialize. Everyone just to communicate, meet each other, argue, get over it, discuss. It's, 
important for the youth to be engaged in something like this and eat some concrete here and there, rub some dirt on it, get up and keep going. Um, More information about Montana Pool Service and the Clinton Skate Park can be found on our website. In Clinton, Derek Joseph, MTN News. Wildlife officials have been monitoring trout in the Silverbow Creek in Butte, but now there's a new program where you can help out too. It may be hard to believe, but the once contaminated Silverbow Creek is now home to brown trout and even cutthroat trout after years of reclamation work. And you can help out in a new program where you can adopt a trout and monitor its progress online. What do you say, Trout? Anybody want to be adopted? Anybody? Hmm? We've been having trouble with fish populations across the state of Montana, so we're trying to understand what's going on, and especially in creeks like Silver Bow Creek that have been newly restored. More than a dozen trout have been inserted with telemetry tags that allows fish, wildlife, and park officials to monitor the movements of the trout in the creek. For a minimum donation of $250, a person can adopt and name and follow their fish. Last season, we had some trout that were here at Silverbow Creek that went all the way to the top of Blacktail Creek in the Highlands, and so you can track how far they've gone. The information will help them understand fish mortality in the creek. Silverbow Creek was designated a dead creek at the beginning of the 20th century due to early mining activity. As early as 1900s, we were flushing tailings down the creek using the creek as a way to carry the tailings away from the smelters that were on Silverbow Creek. For the past 20 years, efforts have been made to clean up the creek and return trout to the waterway. You know, when I was growing up with my dad, we always went over to the big hole for fishing, and this was not an area for fishing at all. And so to now be able to think that, you know, we can cast a line here and catch a fish is is amazing and inspiring to me as a person. People can adopt a trout by going to ripple.givesmart.com. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Still to come on this edition of Positively Montana, celebrating Montana's statehood with a traditional sheep run. Details when we come back. Welcome back to Positively Montana. Reed Point is known for its annual Great Montana Sheep Drive. For the past 35 years, it's happened over Labor Day weekend. This year, the Reed Point Community Club is hoping to have a majority of the exterior work of their revamp of the historic depot done as the sheep fly through the streets. But the club is still looking for donations to bring the depot back to life. The historic Reed Point Depot has lived many lives, but for the last few years, it sat empty. Now, one group in the community is trying to change that. These floors carry 100 years of markings and memories. It's a point in history in Reed Point, but it hasn't been used in years, and so it's kind of just sitting here and wasting away. A little over 20 years ago, the entire train depot was moved, just pushed over to a new location. Just moved it this way so that we could build a new fire hall. Uh, this was used as the fire station at one point. Which is why the Reed Point Community Club is trying to keep it alive, to create even more history for the generations to come. Because it's such a beautiful community, and I think that the community deserves a community center. Cousins Audrey and Lev Ott are two of the six members of the community club raising money for the renovations needed. It's not airtight. It gets extremely cold. There's snow that comes in if it is windy in the winter. We're getting new doors and windows and we're going to just get it painted later this summer and just try and make it a more usable building for for our community. They plan to let clubs use the building for meetings or events or let people rent the space out. But they are still short $1,200 for the siding and are also looking for manpower for the inside work. It's going to be a lot of grunt work and we're hoping that the community can come and help us out to clean things up, to paint, to help with the floors. Hard work to keep history alive.
In Reed Point, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Art Walk Downtown Billings is celebrating 30 years with 31 locations to explore. There is a 32nd within the footprint, but you won't find it on this map. And that's because it's a pop-up market designed to coincide with the main event, and you can find it right across the street. There's nothing quite like the sound of a typewriter and its return. There's something about the sound of a typewriter that just brings people. I'm going to be outside, kind of um, pied pipering people down to the space. The sound inspires Billings writer and founder of Wildwares pop-up market and Holub to write street poetry on postcards for just a few bucks. I started taking um, vintage postcards and I would type poems on them. I really do it as kind of an experiment, what it means to them, what memory maybe it brings up. My favorite moments are when I can take a 30 second conversation with somebody and I can make a little poem. The spectacle may suck you into this otherwise empty space, formerly Gushon Salon across from the Monte Carlo. But once inside, there's even more to do and see with a dozen vendors and their wild wares. I'm a stay at home mom, so this is what gets me through the day. My business is called Needy Creature Crochet. It's mostly like plushies. I do hats and bags. My children have uh, influenced me a lot in making a lot of the plushies. Serena Cuts the Rope is an indigenous artist originally from Fort Belknap. She doesn't have a storefront making the shared creative space extra special even if only for a day. It's never really like about the sales for me. It's about the experiences and meeting people and being able to share my art. Our real goal is to make it something that is surprising and eclectic. The location is a moving target six days per year during the art walk, but no matter the place, you can count on one-of-a-kind vendors like flow artist Grace Kennedy and aura photographer Marsha Culver. And when you've experienced it all, you can stroll down another block and find yourself looking at an indigenous art exhibit at this house of books. Artists Charlie Sleeper, Miraja Pease, and Shirley Marin all have different mediums, bringing more indigenous representation to the Montana art scene. Mark your calendar for every other first Friday and don't forget to return. In Billings, Diane Parker, MTN News. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Positively Montana. That's all the time we have for right now. I'm Hallie Schwedard, and we'll see you right back here next week.